Simon Prevel. Um, I might be jumping the gun a bit here, but um, in the Lagrangian for the Higgs mechanism, that's um, a fight of the four theory. And from what's come from BICEP, um, that's now also supported by a fight of the four potential. Do you think there's a coincidence that the Higgs mechanism and um, this sort, this sort of um, discovery is actually governed by a phi to the four potential. I actually think that phi to the four doesn't work so well. If you go through the numbers, I think phi squared works a lot better. Uh, I don't know whether phi to the fourth is formally excluded. I would say the best is phi squared. Second best would be phi cubed, but that doesn't make any sense because the potential goes down to minus infinity. Uh, so, no, if you're going to put your money on some sort of simple monomial, I would put it on phi squared. Comico Rafferty, um, I think one extra point that th our philosophers in the audience might add is in, in favour is in terms of supersymmetry, you, you have this, you know, yet another fundamental symmetry in nature that could be realised. But the thing is, it doesn't cost you anything. You know, unlike many modern theories, you don't have to give up something like Lorentz invariance or conservation of energy. It's simply a symmetry which could be realised. So I think, given that <laughs> the standard model itself was very much modelled on gauge symmetries, it's 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 most exciting. And um, can I ask you though, empirically? Um, you know, it may be nature isn't kind. It could be that the um, even the lightest supersymmetric partners could be really many years in the future. And I, I, I'm thinking of that slide you showed yesterday, because I'm always conscious that if the positron hadn't showed up, antimatter would have taken maybe 50 to 55 years. Really, it would have been a long, long time before antimatter showed up. So maybe that's the comparison here. Um, in terms of cosmological experiments. What would you like to see in the next generation of cosmological empirical work in cosmology that could cast light, say, on supersymmetry breaking and the first supersymmetric particles? Oof, there's a lot of things in there. Uh, if I take the last one first, if indeed the BICEP2 result is confirmed, then this is fantastically good news. It's a little bit like what I said yesterday, the mass of the Higgs being 125 GV, because then it will be possible to measure those uh, BMOs measure that tensor to scalar ratio quite accurately. Already BICEP2 was given some constraints on, for example, the spectrum, okay, so whether it's tilted or not. Uh, and uh, you know, in the same way, there's been a major industry over the last uh, 20 years in measuring the uh, scalar perturbations. You can imagine a similar industry measuring the, the tensor perturbations. And of course, there's lots of other phenomena also that we're going to be looking for. At some stage of one of my slides, I had FNL, which is a non-Gaussianity, which I mean, standard inflationary cosmology would be expected to be very small, but this needs to be checked. Right? So, so I think that uh, BICEP2 opens up an entire new you know, range of fascinating things to measure in the CMB. Uh, as far as uh, dark matter is concerned, there is a very general argument that uh, in many so wimpy scenarios, so you've got a weakly interacting massive particle, which uh, condensed out of some primordial thermal bath, that its mass should be less than something of the order of a TeV or so. And this, I think, is a good but somewhat qualitative argument. It can be sharpened up in uh, some specific, for example, supersymmetric scenarios. And this is actually something I'm working on at the moment. Uh, but I think that if one could come up with a no-go theorem, well, a no-lose theorem, I should say, saying that you know, if you build a collider of X energy, then we can guarantee that you're going to rule out or verify the WIMP hypothesis, then I think this would be a good argument when we go cap in hand to the funding agencies. OK, I think we need to wind up the session and go and have our coffee. Am I p permitted one final piece of uh, exhibitionism? No. <laughs> it's not your standard model underpants or something, is it? Well, no, not my standard model underpants. It's my... <laughs> It's my uh, physico-philosophical statement of belief on a T-shirt. <laughs>